That's so brilliant! This video is sponsored by Case Filters. I often say in my videos that a better camera doesn't make you a better photographer. It is all about composition, light and storytelling. But what if I would tell you that there are anyway 5 tools which help me massively to improve my photography. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. You know, when we break it down, landscape photography is all about being at the right place, to the right time. But we also need our gear there, our camera, our lenses. We need something to drink uh, for longer hikes, we need even something to eat. We need a rain jacket maybe and lots of other stuff. Now this all makes our backpack not only quite heavy, it makes it also really full. And for years I tried different backpacks with different sizes from different brands and either there wasn't enough space for all my, my gear and equipment or they were uncomfortable to carry and yeah, or there wasn't, it wasn't waterproof or whatever. There was always anything to complain. And ultimately another photographer recommended me to have a look at backpacks from F-Stop. And I want to be honest here with you, I didn't do that for a long time because they always seem to be a bit too expensive for me. I thought it's just a backpack, I don't want to pay just for the name. But some years later when I got really frustrated with all my backpacks, I decided anyway to give it a try. And I have to say, and I'm not sponsored by the way, really I also bait my backpack by myself, but I really can say F-Stop solved all my problems. The straps are quite comfortable, it is fantastically weather sealed with the rain cover, yeah it gets even really rain proofed and I have enough space uh, also for, for bigger photo doers, uh, bigger hikes maybe. The build quality is amazing and the best thing of all is I can choose the interior independent from the back. This means photographers who have more gear, let's say two camera bodies and uh, three or four lenses can choose a bigger interior and so they have less space for the, for the rest. And those who have uh, less gear can choose a smaller interior for the same backpack so they have more space for all the hiking stuff and so. And maybe even, yeah, you can even put a tent or sleeping bag in. Uh, theoretically you could have even yeah, two or more interiors, different sizes for one backpack and you exchange them before each of your photo doers, depending on what you need. There exist also different sizes of backpacks of course. I decided on the biggest one, I think it's uh, 80 liters or so, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really really big but for me it's, yeah, it's simply perfect. I get everything in, it doesn't matter how much stuff I have, also for bigger photo doers. And that's really one of my big game changers for landscape photography because yeah, I don't have to decide which lens I ditch at home just for getting my camping cocaine or so. I will leave you a link down in the description so that you can check it out by yourself. I waited definitely too long for buying the right backpack but there's another thing I didn't use for quite long but it helped me massively to get sharper images and even to get my compositions on point and also to protect my camera. We're talking about an L bracket. So just quickly for those who don't know what an L bracket is. It isn't more than a bracket out of metal which is screwed onto your camera. And uh, the sense behind that is simply that you can change quickly between landscape and portrait orientation because you can clip it up to your ball head here with that. And uh, I mean yeah you could also use uh, your ball head instead and tilt it to the, to the side but in my experience this is not sturdy enough. I mean it's logical, there is a kind of leverage effect and um, this means that all the vibrations which come with the wind or with the water at waterfalls, all the vibrations have a bigger impact to your camera. And also for longer exposures your camera yeah, could do more something like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it tilts down and all that uh, is solved uh, with the simple L bracket. And uh, even more by the way, it is not a 100% thing but when your camera drops down accidentally, yeah this could happen when your ball head is damaged for instance or whatever it is, or you didn't screw it uh, tight enough. I mean when it crashes down on your lens it will definitely uh, be broken uh, but uh, on my experience there is a chance that it hits the L bracket instead and then you have really a great chance that everything is well and your camera is still alive. An L bracket is not all expensive, it's between 
20 and 50 euros, something like that, depending on, on the camera. And the important is also that you use the right uh, L bracket for your camera. And for each model exists another L bracket. I will link you the one I use for my Sony A7R 4 down in the description. I guess most of you will uh, use another camera than me, so you will definitely have to look for another one. But I think it could help you to get an idea about what you need here actually. going to bed and waking up at another place for doing landscape photography. And this is something I was dreaming about for many years. And 2019, I bought my own camper van and it was really a big game changer for me. You know, I have my own company, which is all about ID, software development and marketing. And my problem is, or my problem was actually, I have to be accessible for all my clients all the time, always. When you have a normal job, uh, you get at least a couple of weeks from, from your boss for making holidays. I never got that. I had to be reachable all the time. I had one week each summer for making family holidays and also one at Christmas. But for the rest of the year, yeah, I, I, had, uh, yeah, I was chained to my office actually. Now, my van offers me the possibility to drive anywhere where it is beautiful. I have my laptop with me, but I have also my camera with me. Yeah, what a game changer. I can work in my van, I just need internet connection, but I can also use it as a base camp for my photo tools. I don't use it all the time. I try to use it as efficiently as possible. This means, yeah, for spots around my home, I use my normal car, of course. It doesn't make sense to drive there with my van, but for longer distances, the van offers me possibilities I never had before. And it also allows me to make longer road trips um, where I also take my wife with me. But there are also downsides, by the way. First of all, for bigger trips, I need my wife with me. Yeah, I mean, you, the van is, is quite big and there's, there are situations on the road where you simply need a co-pilot who maybe looks out of the window just to have a look how many centimeters there are between the tire and the drop off. And the thing is, I, I can't grab just my wife and go on a trip. Uh, she has also, she also needs to have time therefore, and there must also be anything interesting for her, of course. I am a landscape photographer, but my wife isn't. <laughs> this doesn't sound after the, the biggest problem in the world, but uh, the planning effort can get quite high uh, in such a case and much higher than for a normal photo tour. But ultimately, my van brings me to places where I would definitely not be able to go without it. There's everything inside I need, a cooker, a fridge, a sink, a shower, a bed of course, a bathroom, a toilet, a dinette with a table that is expandable. It is comfortable. I, I can work there, I can process my image. It's really comfortable. Every landscape photographer should have one like that actually. Well, before I will tell you about the tool which was the biggest game changer in my landscape photography, my friends, if you like this video, please consider to give me a thumb up. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it helps also other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, the next game changer tool is not one single tool actually. Let me explain. You know, when we want to get a really strong image, we need a compelling composition, but we also need the right light. Now, in landscape photography, the light is totally dependent on the weather. So when we understand the weather, when we are able to be 100% prepared for the weather, we have a great chance to get home with a masterpiece in our bag. The problem with forecasts is that they are not made for landscape photographers actually. It is not possible to predict the weather exactly, but it is possible to predict different weather scenarios. So when there is a predicted, a, let's say a 40% chance for rain, for instance, uh, what is, is with the other 60%? Uh, how could the weather get in that case? Will there be fog or will there be clear sunshine? Uh, will the clouds turn red maybe or will there be haze? Uh, there is no weather app which gives you an answer here. But ultimately, I found a solution which allows me to be prepared for nearly every weather scenario. Of course, sometimes I oversee a scenario. Sometimes the weather is also difficult to predict. But I have to say, in most of the cases, I'm really totally prepared for the weather. So the big game changer tool, which I use for multiple years now, is weather maps. Not apps, maps. 
So I don't rely on apps actually. Uh, what I do instead is I make my own weather forecast. I want to be honest, it, it is something you have to engage with. Uh, it takes a while, it's nothing what, what will come overnight. It is an effort, but it really helped me to be prepared for each weather scenario. There exist different weather maps from uh, different weather providers and for every geographical area there exist, another, uh, there exist other maps and other providers. I will link you the maps I use for Middle Europe down in the description. But you need also to learn how to read weather maps of course. And I made already a video about that. I will link it up here for you. Now let's come to the biggest game changer tool I have ever experienced in landscape photography. I get often asked, Christian, why do you do so easy with finding compositions? And uh, to be honest, there is a trick I use. You know, we have two eyes, so we perceive our, our three-dimensional world three-dimensional. But a photo has just two dimensions, which makes the appearance totally different. Especially the sense of depth is missing, yeah, because of the missing third dimension, obviously. So to come away with that, I use my phone. And when I think there could be a composition, I just grab my phone and find unit. I could also use my camera at that point, but my phone is better actually. Yeah, I mean, my, my phone is uh, much faster accessible. I just have to grab it from my pocket when I don't have it forgotten anywhere. Uh, and also the display is better than uh, on my camera. The viewfinder on my Sony a 7 r 4 is really, really fantastic, I have to say. But I just use it to fine tune at the final composition. 95% of my compositional work is done with my phone actually. And when we boil it down, I'm a phone photographer. But however, it makes things really much easier for me. But there are also a lot of apps I use on my phone. Photobills is quite good. Uh, it contains really everything a landscape photographer could need. A sunny drag offers me a faster access to the direction of the sun. It's also a quite good app, just for Android, unfortunately. Um, I use uh, Weather Radar and uh, for waterfall photography, the river app is a quite good idea, by the way. This helps me to get sure that there is enough water in the waterfalls before I drive there. So all in all, my phone was a really big game changer tool for me. Yeah, I, I didn't have this in my youth age so with analog photography. And my current phone is not the newest phone on the market, by the way. It is a OnePlus 7 Pro. I think it is around three years old or so. The camera is quite good in OnePlus phones. Uh, this was the main criterion for me back then. Yeah, I use OnePlus up from version one already. They get supported for many years and uh, don't get slower with time. That's really incredible. And also the price is okay. And yeah, if you're interested, I will, I will link it down in the description. You have to check out a newer version of it, but yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with it. But however, the most important thing for me is actually that it helps me to find compositions. And of course, there's much more um, to consider if you want to find a compelling composition. And I picked out this video here for you, where I explain everything in detail about how to find a composition. Now friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give me a thumb up. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to tune in next week and become a fantastic video as well. See you next time. Bye.